You can greatly increase your income at year end through calls and visits, even during a pandemic. Find out now. Many of you have given me positive feedback on those recent videos directed towards year-end giving. And then there was Jeff, who just yesterday reached out to say he received a pace-setting match from the first person he asked. Well done, Jeff. I created a four-step process that's become my guiding principles when talking and eventually meeting with current and potential partners. The first step is listen. Common sense and proper judgment are the most is the most prudent way to proceed opinions on the pandemic span the spectrum and it's never profitable to argue right or wrong policies with your partners as i test the waters with partners i first ask the question how has this pandemic affected you and just pause to listen that question opens the door for partners to share their heart I never make value judgments or weigh into right or wrong decisions that they made. I find some people are very afraid while others are very skeptical, but most are right in the middle. Concerns for health, safety, and financial stability consume most conversations. Simply listening to a partner is vital to a growing relationship, and that applies to any time, not just this time of uncertainty. A colleague once shared a story of a meeting he had with a couple. Prior to the appointment, he met with countless couples just like them, sharing success stories of a new digital strategy that was literally changing the way we reached our audience. He found such receptiveness with the stories he shared and raised a lot of money that he found himself becoming very comfortable with his presentation, even to the point of being overconfident. With great enthusiasm, he immediately dove into the presentation of this new strategy with the couple and followed up with an ask. This time, when he finished, the donor paused for a moment, collected his thoughts, and said, You need to know one thing. I believe the internet is of Satan, and my wife thinks it's even worse. Well, clearly, they had an incredibly strong and passionate feeling about this. That brought an uncomfortable, awkward silence and ended a quick closure to the conversation. My colleague returned to the office to share how he had violated the most important lesson in development and fundraising. Ask questions first to determine people's interests and desires. He had a number of projects he could have shared instead of this that probably would have received funding from the couple, but instead he left empty-handed. Had he just asked a few probing questions and listened, the outcome most certainly would have been a lot different. Lesson learned on his part. After listening, the opportunity presents itself to learn from what was said. If a partner lost their job, was furloughed, or was helping someone in their family who was, it gives me an opportunity to find out what they need and how I can help them. And of course, what's the next step in our relationship? It's been said that we should listen twice as much as we speak, and that goes for learning as well. When we seek to learn all we can about the passions, desires of our partners, that makes what makes them weep and pound the table. It helps us determine how those feelings match with our mission. Are we both in sync? After a period of listening and learning, I start the process referred to as leverage. After a while, people shift to asking me a variation of this question. Well, Jim, how is your organization, how are they weathering this storm? Or are you guys doing okay at this time? That opens the door for me to share a variety of responses. First, it's important never to go down the path of how bad things are, even if they're bad. I've mentioned before that no one wants to give to an organization or person that's going under or perceived to be going under. And while I would also never sugarcoat things, I would most certainly emphasize the positives. Remember, every organization has needs, but few have exciting opportunities. Leverage involves taking the opportunity, present ways that their giving made a difference at this time, but also in a very sensitive manner, present ways that our partnership could be more valuable now than in the past. And that includes presenting programs, projects, and people that need funding. 
I often highlight the doors that opened or exciting things that may have never existed before this pandemic. A phrase that I use quite often at this time is, some partners have had to give less at this time, but others have been able to give more, much more. That helps our partners. I've seen many people make up the giving of lost partners. And lastly, I'm able to lift partners to a higher level by providing reports and successes of changed lives and things that have happened as a result of their current gift. Yes, so much could be done over the phone, but there's still something special about the opportunity to meet with someone in person. When deciding to meet, I've used the rule that I will not initiate with any partner so as not to make them feel guilty to say no due to fears or health concerns. However, if a partner feels a strong need to meet with me, and I've had that even in older donors who are at, at, a greatest, at the greatest risk, I always say yes, but of course everyone has an individual comfort level. There are times that I'm the first person they reach out to beyond meeting with their family. Be sensitive to many suffer from loneliness and depression, develop through months of isolation. Take this opportunity to minister to them or help them process their emotions. I have taken every opportunity to meet locally with people in outside settings, observing all social distancing guidelines and wearing a mask, especially if it makes the partner more comfortable. Calling partners at year end is a given to effectively increase income. But when I'm able to meet in person, that's always the preference. Remember, whether during COVID or non-COVID times, relationship building should be your primary goal. Nonprofits who have survived and even thrived during this time are those who continue to put relationships over revenue. If you wish to learn more about year-end campaigns or strategies, I recommend that you watch the video Year-End Appeal Strategies linked above and subscribe to this channel to be notified when the next video is released. And post a comment below if there are questions you have or things you especially liked. I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you.